Hey everyone, in this video we're going to learn how to solve quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. Before we define the quadratic formula, let's look at our first example to give us some motivation. So solve for x, and the equation is x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0. So intuitively, we're going to try to factor the quadratic, especially because that's how we've been solving these equations over the past two videos. But if we look at this quadratic, we would need factors of positive 1 that add to negative 4. And I can't think of any. Now to confirm that this quadratic is not factorable, let's find the discriminant, which if we recall is b squared minus 4ac. So we have a equals 1, b equals negative 4, c equals positive 1, and the discriminant with a quick computation is negative 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1, which is 16 minus 4, which is 12. Now, that tells us that the quadratic is not factorable because it's not a perfect square. So now the question is, because we can't factor it, does it have no solution or no solutions? Well, this equation actually does have solutions. So how are we supposed to find them? If we can't factor it, we're we supposed to just guess and check until we miraculously figure out what the answers to this equation are? Or is there a better way? There is. It's using the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And it's used to solve quadratic equations, which are, are, which are of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, where x represents a variable, a, b, and c are constants, and a is not equal to 0. Now I'm going to underline this last piece. It seems insignificant. Why are we throwing in that fact that a can't be equal to 0? But it's actually pretty important. If a is equal to 0, then we really just have bx plus c, which means we don't have a quadratic. And if we don't have a quadratic, then we don't need a quadratic formula. So it's really important that a is not equal to 0. b could be 0, c could be 0, a cannot be 0. So now let's look at the quadratic formula a little bit more closely. First thing I think we should notice is the b squared minus 4ac under the square root. This is the discriminant, right? That's what we found in the previous example. So we could actually write the quadratic formula as x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of the discriminant over 2a. And I like this form because we already need to know the discriminant to help us figure out if a quadratic is factorable or not. So might as well condense the quadratic formula and make it look simpler. Now the other thing I want to point out is this plus or minus. Why does this formula need plus or minus? Well, a little motivation there. Think back to a factoring problem. When you factored, maybe the factors were x minus 1 times x plus 3. And you would have positive 1 or negative 3 as your two solutions. But you had two solutions. So in order for the quadratic formula to find both of those solutions, we need a plus or minus so that we get the two different values that we're supposed to get. Now the nice thing about the quadratic formula is it can be used for problems that can be factored, or it can be used for problems like in the previous example where we can't factor them. The only thing I will say is if a quadratic can be factored, it's more efficient, quicker to factor it and solve than it is going to be by uh, using the quadratic formula. And we'll compare the two in one of the examples that we do uh, coming up. But let's get back to that first example. x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0. So now our directions state to solve for all real values of x by using the quadratic formula, and our answer should be in simplest possible form. OK, so we already listed out the values. a is 1, b is negative 4, c is positive 1, the discriminant was 12. So now we can go into the quadratic formula. So x equals the negation of b, so the negation of negative 4, plus or minus the square root of 12 over 2 times a, which is in this case 1. Now, simplest possible form, that's an important piece here. That means that if the square root can be simplified, 
we need to simplify it. And then further, if it can be simplified, if values can be simplified, we need to do that as well. well let's start with the square root. So the square root of 12 can be written as the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, which is 2 times the square root of 3. So we can rewrite the quadratic formula, so the negation of negative 4 is positive 4, plus or minus 2 times the square root of 3 over 2. Now, I should notice that each term is divisible by 2, so what I'll do is in the numerator, I'll factor out a positive 2, which is the greatest common factor, and we'll have 2 plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. Now the 2 that we factored out and the 2 in the denominator simplify, and we have x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 3. If we wanted to, we can rewrite them separately, and we could say x equals 2 plus the square root of 3, or x equals 2 minus the square root of 3. And those would be the two solutions of the quadratic equation. Okay, so two things on the simplification. First, pay attention to that square root, make sure it's in simplest radical form. And then next, if you can take a GCF, a greatest common factor from the numerator, do that and see if it simplifies with the denominator. I prefer that method than just trying to simplify each of the coefficients by two, because what I find is most students are going to cross this two and this two out, leave the four alone and come up with the incorrect solution. So my advice is take a greatest common factor out, see if it simplifies with the denominator. If it does, simplify it, clean up your answer. If it doesn't, you can just go back one step and circle that as your answer. So next up, x squared plus 5x equals 7x plus 3. First thing, we need the equation to be equal to 0. So x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. If we move the two terms on the right to the other side. So a is 1, b is negative 2, c is negative 3. Our discriminant then is negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 3. So we have positive 4 plus 12, which is 16. Now, that does tell us we could factor this, but the directions state to use the quadratic formula. So we're using the quadratic formula. So x equals the negation of b, so negative negative 2, plus or minus the square root of the discriminant, which is 16, all over 2a, which is 2 times 1. So simplifying here, we'd have positive 2 plus or minus 4 over 2. Now, some of you are going to try this, but we can't do 2 plus or minus 4. It doesn't work that way. We can't add 4 and subtract 4 at the same time. So we'll split them up. So x equals 2 plus 4 over 2 is one solution. And x is 2 minus 4 over 2 is the other. So we'd have 2 plus 4, which is 6 over 2, so x equals 3. Here we'd have negative 2 over 2, or x equals negative 1. So our solution set is negative 1 or positive 3. Now, we didn't have a choice. We had to use quadratic formula here. The directions said so. But what if we didn't have directions and we were just told solve? Well, let's compare our work here, which we can see, to factoring. So if we factor this, we'd have x minus 3 times x plus 1 equals 0. And we have two factors whose product is 0. So x minus 3 equals 0, or x plus 1 equals 0. So x equals positive 3, or x equals negative 1. Way more efficient to solve by factoring when it is possible. The only reason I want to point this out is because sometimes students say, well, if the quadratic formula always works, well, shouldn't I just use that all the time? And my argument against that would be, I solved this in three steps, where the quadratic formula took way more than three steps. Next up, x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 0. Okay, so a is 1, b is negative 4 c is positive 4, then our discriminant is negative 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 4. So 16 minus 16 is 0. 
So our discriminant is zero. Now, just a reminder, zero is a perfect square, so we could factor this if we weren't given the directions, but we're going to use the quadratic formula. So x equals the negation of b, so the negation of negative four, plus or minus the square root of zero over two times one. So that means we have positive four plus or minus zero over two. Well, four plus zero, four minus zero, this is the one case where they actually are the same thing. So here we just get four over two or two. Okay, so our solution is x equals two. Now, technically there are two answers. They both happen to be two, right? If I wrote them out separately, I'd have four plus zero over two. I'd also have four minus zero over two. Both of these would give us x equals two. Okay, so it happens that there are two answers. They just are the same answer. So we only have to list it once. But this is nice to emphasize what happens when the discriminant is zero. Next up, we have 2x squared equals 11. So first thing, we need to set our equation equal to zero before we solve, right? That zero product property. Now, using the quadratic formula, so a is two, b is, hmm, there's no x term. So what is b? Well, if there's no x term, that means this coefficient was zero. So that means b is zero. c is negative 11. And our discriminant then is zero squared minus four times a times c. So we have zero plus 88, which is 88. So we can have b equal to zero. We can have c equal to zero if there was no constant term, but never should have a equaling to zero because then we don't have a quadratic. So now, in the quadratic formula, we have the negation of b, which is zero, plus or minus the square root of 88, all over two a, so two times two. Okay, so square root of 88, we can simplify that to be the square root of four times the square root of 22. Um, yeah, that's it, right? 22, 11, and two, but neither of those are perfect squares, so that's the best we're going to do. So that's two times the square root of 22. So x equals zero plus or minus two times the square root of 22 over four. So in this case, we're going to separate them. So we have x equals, well, zero plus two over, two times the square root of 22 over four is just two times the square root of 22 over four. And then zero minus two square root of 22 is negative two square root of 22 over four. So the two and the four simplify here, the two and the four simplify here. So x equals the square root of 22 over two, or x equals negative square root of 22 over two. Okay, so our solution set would be negative square root of 22 over two, square root of 22 over two. A lot of twos in these solutions. Hey, but again, this example emphasizes what happens when we're missing a term, right? We just make that variable zero and proceed with the quadratic formula. All right, next up, four X times X minus five equals negative 15. So we have some simplification to do before we get started. So four X squared minus 20 X equals negative 15. We need to equal to zero. So four X squared minus 20 X plus 15 equals zero. Okay, so A is four, B is negative 20, C is 15. Our discriminant then, negative 20 squared minus four times four times 15. So we have 400 minus 240, so that's going to be 160. So we have our values, we go into the quadratic formula. So we have the negation of negative 20 plus or minus the square root of 160 all over two times four. 
So square root of 160, that's the square root of 16 times the square root of 10, which is 4 rad 10. Square root of 10 can't be simplified any further, so that's the simplest radical form. So we got positive 20 plus or minus 4 times the square root of 10 over 8. Now the greatest common factor in the numerator is 4, so we'll factor that out. And let's see, the 4 and the 8 simplify. So that gives us x equals 5 plus or minus the square root of 10 over 2. And we'll leave our answer like this, right? Nice condensed form, x equals 5 plus or minus the square root of 10 over 2. If we want, we can put the curly brackets around for the solution set but we don't need to here. Next up, first thing we gotta do in our equation, move everything to one side. So 2x squared minus 5x plus 9 equals zero. So a is two, b is negative five, c is positive nine. That means our discriminant is negative five squared minus four times a times c, so two times nine. We have 24 minus 72, which is negative 47. Hmm, we've never solved one yet where we have a negative discriminant. Right, if we were factoring, we would just say it's not factorable. But if we go into the quadratic formula, we'd be trying to take the square root of negative number, which is not a real number and we're looking for only the real values of x. So then we don't actually have to keep going. Our answer is that this equation has no real solutions. Okay, so that's going to happen anytime that we get a negative discriminant, right? Taking the square root of a negative number gives us something called an imaginary number, which is something that you're going to learn about later on in algebra two, but right now, what that tells us in the quadratic formula is that there are no real solutions. Next up, third equals zero, so we jump right in. So a is six, b is five, c is negative four, so our discriminant then, we have five squared minus four times six times negative four. So we have 25 plus, 24 times four, so that's 80, 16, so 96, and we get 121. So again, we could factor it, but the directions say we're using the quadratic formula. So we proceed, so we have negation of five, plus or minus the square root of 121, all over two times six. So x equals negative five plus or minus 11 over 12. And now to come up with our solutions, we separate. So we have negative five plus 11 over 12, or x equals negative five minus 11 over 12. So x equals negative five plus 11 is six over 12. So that means that x equals one half, or we have x equals negative 16 over 12, which means we have x equals negative four over three. So our solution set, negative four over three, or positive one half. Perfect. Last example, eight x squared plus 20 x plus seven equals two x minus x squared. So we'll start by moving all the terms over to one side. So we have nine x squared plus 18 x plus seven equals zero. So a is nine, b is 18, c is seven, not 17, as I was about to write. And our discriminant then is 18 squared minus four times nine times seven I'm gonna get my calculator out, give me a little help here. So 18 times 18, we have 324 minus four times nine times seven. 
is 252. So 324 minus 252 is 72. So now we go into our quadratic formula. So x equals the negation of 18 plus or minus the square root of the discriminant, which is 72, over 2 times 9. So x is, well, let's see, square root of 72. In simplest radical form, that's going to be the square root of 9 times the square root of 8. No, that's not simplest radical form. I can do better. So that's the square root of 36 times the square root of 2, which is going to be 6 times the square root of 2. So we have negative 18 plus or minus 6 times the square root of 2 over 18. We can take a greatest common factor of 6 out, so negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 2 over 18. 6 and 18 simplify, gives us a 3 in the denominator. So x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 2 over 3. And that's our solution. So that finishes out our video on the quadratic formula. There'll be a second video that talks about how we can figure out what our solutions are going to be, real or not real, how many solutions we have, before we even get to the quadratic formula. But right now, I want you to take this time to practice with the quadratic formula. Right, Make a flashcard so it helps to memorize it. Right, The more, or if you have it memorized, the easier time you're going to have solving with the quadratic formula and practicing all of the different cases that could come up. Right? If you have a discriminant that's negative, there's no real solutions. Sometimes we have a discriminant that's a perfect square. They'll simplify nicely. Other times we have to take the square root of the discriminant and put it in simplest radical form and simplify further from there. So now it's up to you to practice and then head over and watch the second video in this particular concept. Click the Amazon link down below for my algebra workbook so you can practice on your own. Give the video a like, and before you go, click that subscribe button so you can see more videos just like this. Thanks for watching.